Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be creating a really simple model from scratch here, just using the basic vanilla Blender tool, so no add-ons. Um, this will not only help people who are brand new to Blender, but also kind of give you an idea of how the native tools inside of Blender work. Let's get started. Now, if you're absolutely brand new to hard surface modeling, never touched Blender before, Grab our free hard surface jumpstart course on our website that'll get you up to speed and this tutorial will be a lot easier for you to follow along. It's a really short course, very informative. You can check that out for free on our website, link in the description. Anyways, what I want to do here is first of all talk about how we're going to set up our basic blender scene. So the first thing I want to do is make sure we're in the solid mode, which we are. And here we can go to the drop down menu and turn on cavity. Now. What cavity does is it highlights the edges of your model like this. So the more convex edges. So um, I would highly recommend doing this because when you're modeling, if this is turned off, you're actually not going to have as much creativity as you are when this is turned on, believe it or not. Because what this does is it highlights the form of your model and observing the form and building on top of it is very, very important. So I'd highly recommend turning the setting on, you can copy my settings if you prefer. Cool, so now what I wanna do is show you the basic Blender add-ons you can use, the free ones. So um, if you are using Hard Ops and Box Cutter, the add-ons that I use, uh, feel free to use those and follow along, but for this tutorial, I'm gonna keep it vanilla. So the only thing you're gonna to need to turn on here is the Bool Tool add-on. You can just type that in, turn it on. Um, if your autosave is turned on, you can just close it. And basically, you're going to have every single thing that you're going to need for hard surface modeling. So the first thing I do whenever I'm making a simple hard surface design in Blender is I first focus on the primary form that I'm working with, okay? So we'll take the cube. We have the cube here, and I'm just going to kind of scale this down. I'm going to scale this up a bit on the X, okay? So something like this. And like I said, if you're brand new to Blender, I'm not gonna tell you every single hotkey. Take our free jumpstart course, so that way you can follow along. But um, yeah, we're gonna do something basic like this. And now what I wanna do is, I don't know, we're just gonna kinda play with the shape a little bit. So we'll go into edge mode, bevel it with Control B, and notice the bevel's a little bit skewed. So what I'm gonna actually do is press Control A and apply the scale here in object mode. All right, and then we'll just bevel this maybe double tap G, slide that over. I guess we didn't really need to apply the scale because we basically did the same effect, but something like that would be reasonable. All right, I'm happy with that. And then maybe in the back here, we could do the same thing, kind of bevel that and then move this over. And I wanna make sure that these edges here are not lined up. So this one, I wanna make sure these are not in the same spot because what a lot of people will do is they'll keep these things very very monotone, very lined up. You wanna have a nice contrast between the different elements of your shape. So I'm gonna make sure this is a little bit more forward than the edge up here, see what I mean? And then maybe what we could do is scale this little bit on the Z axis just to kind of give it a little bit more height. And now we're gonna have uh, this result right here. Awesome. So once you've created a basic block out, what I usually like to do is start introducing dynamic elements to the mesh. And the best way you can do this is by introducing bevels to your model. So we're just going to go into edge mode and you're going to see how much of a difference this will make. So what I'm going to do for these more, um, these flatter portions, see how this is almost flat. What I like to do on these types of edges, is I like to make these more or less a larger size bevel. So not super small. So we'll go to like, I don't know, right here. And since I'm not worried about the poly count, I'm just going to give it a nice amount of segments. Then down here, we can do the same thing. Nothing crazy. And actually, as a matter of fact, what I do want to do, I'm going to undo this. What I do want to do here, I want to move this one forward and actually move this one backward. Um, I just have a feeling it'll look a little bit better. And also, I want to pull this a little bit. I don't want this to be right in the center, so maybe like this. I think this is going to look a tad bit better, just a guess though. Yeah, I much prefer the look of this. Very small changes can completely change the way your entire model looks, so keep that in mind. All right, so we have this, then maybe here in the, on these two, we could bevel this, get a nice rounded effect there in the back. 
then here in the front we can do the same thing control B bevel that and now we have a much softer looking shape just by adding bevels now if your edges are kind of like notice how they're flat right here around the corners if you want to fix that basically just right click to shade smooth your mesh and then enable the auto smooth here which will make sure that it shades based off of the angles of each of these faces here so that'll kind of clean that up and now what I want to do is introduce a little bit more um, visually appealing elements in here alright so I'm gonna add in a cube shift a then we'll add in a cube and scale this down maybe to about there now one thing you're gonna start to learn as you work more and more inside of blender is you're gonna begin to notice that you're kind of thinking of future designs in the back of your head so for example, when I'm adding in elements, which we're eventually going to cut into this mesh, I'm kind of thinking about what's going to happen a step after this. So for example, I'm most likely I'm going to introduce some chamfered effects around this cut I'm about to make, which means I don't want to make this cut super tight because then I won't really have room for the chamfer and it's just not going to look good. So the more you kind of make these types of models, the more you kind of think about this in the back of your head as you're modeling. Anyways, what I want to do is pull this back, kind of start focusing more in one area rather than the center, and then we can apply the scale here. And I'm going to control alt left click these edges. It'll select all the edges in the same direction here. You can bevel those. Maybe move these a little bit further back. And maybe what I could do is if we go into wireframe mode, and box select these with the B key. Just kind of pull those forward like that. Looks good. And then just like we did before, shade smooth your cutter. This is about to be a cutter. And you can turn on the auto smooth. It doesn't really matter for the cutter piece. And the reason I'm calling this a cutter is because if we shift click on this object and we press control shift B on the keyboard, you're going to have two different settings here. You're going to have auto boolean and brush boolean and we're just going to be using the brush boolean here and go there and now what we basically have is a cutter object now notice it's kind of turned into a rectangular prism the edges aren't beveled and that's just because whenever you run a cutter with the bool tool add-on what that actually does if we go here to uh, visibility no not visibility viewport display there's actually a setting here to uh, change this back over to a to a wire and we can switch that in case we don't like the bound setting, just like that. Cool, I just think it looks a little bit more natural. And also, the reason we're not using the brush boolean, let me show you, I'll remove this. The reason we're not using the brush boolean is because if we use that, what it actually does is it applies the boolean operation, meaning this geometry is now, it, it's now uh, accessible, see what I mean? Whereas if we use this other boolean option here, the brush boolean, we can still move this around and make changes, and that's why I prefer to use the brush boolean. And this is what we call a non-destructive workflow because we can make changes whenever we want to the mesh here. Now sometimes when you add a boolean, the cavity turns off. I think that's just a bug. We can turn that back on if that ever happens. Let me quickly change this back to wire. Okay, awesome. So we can press the H key to hide that, and now we have a really simple mesh here. So now what I usually like to do is I like to begin introducing different visually appealing elements to my model. So we can do this in the form of chamfers, which are basically one segment bevels, um, adding additional bevels on the edges. So um, for example, this is a perfectly hard edge, but if we added a small little bevel to it, let me show you, select this. If we added a small little bevel, notice it looks a little bit more natural. But anyways, what I'm going to do here is actually apply this boolean. I'm happy with that. And now what I'd like to do is go into edge mode, and I don't think I've mentioned it yet, but I am using the machine tools add-on to get in and out of edit mode. It's a free add-on. I would recommend downloading it. Anyways, we're going to go into edge mode and alt-click on these edges here. And if it doesn't work, all we're just going to do is control-click around instead. I would show you how to do it with Mesh Machine, but I only want to show you the free add-ons for this tutorial so you understand the native tools. So with all these edges selected, we can just press Control-B to add a bevel. We'll scroll down until we have just one segment here. And there we go, we have a nice little chamfer on the inside. Looks good, we're going to do the same thing on the outside here. 
Just gonna control click around. And then do another little chamfer on the outside. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll turn off the overlays panel here and just kind of look at it that way. Sometimes it gives me a better idea of how I want this thing to look. Awesome, so now what I wanna introduce is another Boolean here on the inside. Now there's a few different ways we could do this and I'll show you some of them. So let me press the tilde key and go into left view, right, front, back, there we go, back view. And what I wanna do here is I wanna make a cut right on this side. So I'm gonna add in a cube I'm going to show you the first way to do this. So I want this cut to kind of flow with the shape. I don't want to make like a random cut like this. Let me show you. I don't want to make like a random cut like this because it doesn't look good or natural at all. I want the cut to kind of flow with the shape. So what we can do is we can just kind of trace that out. So for example, I could take this edge here and bevel it, right? And then maybe I could take this edge and just kind of slide it a bit on the X. So now it's parallel with this edge. This is what we call echoing detail. And then what I could do is maybe take this portion, move it up a little bit on the X. See what I mean? And then maybe we could, I don't know, extrude this, move that down. And then we could maybe take this edge down here. Just kind of move that up, just like that. And then what we can do is just run a Boolean again. So Shift click, Control Shift B, and then we'll run a brush Boolean. And now we have a cut that kind of flows along nicely with the, with the object. Now I want to show you a much better way to do this. This, for one, is not as accurate as the solution I'm about to show you here, and it's also a lot slower. So what I'm going to do is delete this, and if you delete a boolean, just make sure you also remove the modifier because we don't need that. What I'm going to do instead is tap into face mode, and I'm going to steal this face. So what I can do is press Shift D to duplicate it, right click, and then P to separate by selection. So now we have its own separate object here. And you can probably see where I'm going with this. What I'm going to do is tab back into face mode select it with the A key, and then inset this face. So we'll press I to inset, and we're just gonna inset right to about there. A little bit more maybe. And then I'm just gonna press Control I to invert the selection, and then X and delete faces. And now this is following along the mesh perfectly. So I'm just gonna move this a little bit out on the Y axis so there's some space, and then I'm gonna press E to extrude this all the way through. And sometimes if you extrude in one direction, um, the normals will actually be incorrectly oriented. So make sure if you turn on face orientation and see red, that you select it and press shift N to recalculate the normals. That'll basically, um, let me show you what I mean. This basically means the mesh is inside out. We want it to be the right way. So shift N will fix that. And now what we can do, just go into object mode and run our brush boolean once again, just like that. However, I don't want this to cut all the way through the mesh here. I just want it to cut to about here. So what I'm actually gonna do is add in a cube. I'm gonna kind of rotate this cube. I'm gonna position it right to about here or so. I could even scale that down a bit. And then I'm just gonna scale this cube on the Y axis and then shift click on the cutter. And I'm gonna press Control Shift B and we can run a, um, another Boolean like that. Cool, so now what we're basically gonna have is a shape kind of cutting through the object like this and we can hide our cutters. Very nice, so now at this point, all I wanna do is just apply this Boolean like that. And I'm gonna introduce a nice little bevel here. Nice little bevel right here. Another bevel here and then another bevel right here. And now we kind of have this nice little smooth transition. And I just want to make sure it's flipped to the other side. So a few different ways to do this. The um, easiest way is probably with a symmetry, but I don't use symmetry in Native Blender. It's too convoluted. So usually what I'll do is I'll add a mirror modifier like that. We'll change the axis to the Y axis. It'll flip to the other side, and then we can just apply that mirror modifier. Very easy. Cool, so now what I want to do is I want to chamfer the edges on the outside here. And for some weird reason, we have like this weird stray geometry. I have no clue how that actually happened. 
Let me quickly undo this. Undo it back to when the mirror modifier was here. Let me remove that. So the mirror modifier is causing some weird problems. It's interesting. So maybe what I'll do before I add that mirror is I'll actually just control click all around here. Okay. I'm going to press control B to add a small little chamfer on the outside like that. Let me turn cavity back on. And now what I'm going to do is add the mirror modifier again. Turn off the X, turn on the Y. And for some reason, the mirror is doing something really weird. What we might need to do is turn on the bisect option here. And it looks like that fixed it. So we'll turn, um, we'll apply that. And there we go. Sometimes weird issues like that can happen. That's another reason I use add-ons. And now what I want to do is press Control R to introduce a loop cut on the inside here. Then we'll right click. And what in the world happened here? Interesting. So what I just realized is that our Boolean kind of cut into this corner here, which is generally not going to be the best thing. So what I'm going to actually do here real quick is undo that again. I'd rather keep these mistakes here in the video just to show you. I'm going to undo this again, bring that Boolean back. If I can, hopefully I can get back to it. Should be able to. There it is. And what I'm going to do instead is just move this boolean slightly more forward. So we'll just move that forward like that. So that way it's not encroaching on this um, corner space here. It's just right outside of it. And then what I can do is apply this boolean again. And we can hide these cutters with the H key. There we go. Then just kind of go back to what we did before. Run a bevel here. Run a bevel here. And then for these two as well. And then just like we did before, we're going to control click all the way around these edges and uh, basically just add a chamfer. So control B like that. And then we'll add a mirror modifier, turn off the X and then turn on the Y, including the bisect option. And it looks like that uh, fixed the problem. Cool. So now I should be able to go into edit mode here and press control R and add in a loop cut. We're going to right click to cancel that and then control B to bevel this and we're going to give it one segment. Now check this out. What I can do is press E to extrude, right click to cancel that extrusion and then alt S to scale in along the normals here. We'll turn on this uh, offset even option. And now we kind of have this cool little effect here on the inside. Maybe it's a little bit too big. Maybe we'll just make it about that size, but I think it looks pretty cool. Just brings it a bit more visual interest here. And notice that these edges are a little bit faceted, so we're just going to right click to shade smooth the mesh again, and that should fix it. And just one more time, I'm going to add another mirror modifier here. We'll do that real quick. There we go. Now the last thing I want to do on this model is introduce one more little effect here in the front, just to make it look a bit more appealing. So I'm going to go into the back view again. I'm going to add in a cube. And basically what I want to do with this cube is I want to rotate it and make sure that this edge kind of lines up with this one like that. And I'm just going to move this cut down here. Okay. And I'm going to take this, um, I'm going to take this edge. And if we go into vertex snap, what I can do is turn that on. I'm going to turn off this align rotation to target. Otherwise it goes crazy. So we're going to turn this off. And then if I press the G key to grab it and then press the Z key to move on the Z axis, I can hold control and snap it here so it's on the same level. And now I'm just going to scale this up a little bit on the Y axis to avoid that weird Z fighting problem. And we can basically just run yet another Boolean. So control shift B, use that brush Boolean and we can just kind of move this to a more ideal location, maybe right here. And then I'm just going to go ahead and apply that Boolean. Should be good to go. And this is a pretty interesting situation. So when we apply that Boolean, if I want to bevel this edge right here, I really can't because these edges around it are in the way. It kind of hits them. So what I could do is dissolve these out with Control X, and that should give me some space to run the bevel. But by doing that, I've basically given myself this really nasty shading stretch. So in this type of case, it would actually be better to do this with the cutter. So I'm going to undo this real quick. Bring that Boolean back. And in this case, what I'm actually going to do is bevel the Boolean here. So we're going to go in and bevel that. 
And you're going to see now it kind of bevels independently of the geometry here on the inside. And now once I've done that, I can go ahead and apply my Boolean. And then here, maybe I'll bevel these. Looks like I should have enough room for that. Very nice. And then right click to shade that smooth again. And now we have this really clean, simple looking model. So obviously you could keep adding detail to this, making some more like microscopic detail, maybe some little bolts in the corners or whatever, but I'll let you do that on your own. I just wanted to show you the really simple, basic vanilla blender workflow that you can start using today to get some really cool results. So I hope this video was valuable. And even if you're using add-ons, I still hope you learned a little bit here and can kind of follow along using add-ons as well. If you're brand new to Blender, um, check out some of our other tutorials. And if you want to get into the easier add-on workflow, I have plenty of tutorials showing the hard ops and box cutter add-ons, which I would highly recommend getting. And like I said, we also have our hard surface jumpstart course on our site. So feel free to pick that up. Other than that, I hope this video helped you and I'll see you in the next one.